welcome to the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Now this is Carl's long-term test car. I've been driving it around everywhere, frankly, for the last few months. And as all American off-roaders go, this is a pretty darn good one. For starters, it's an absolute icon. I mean, just look at it. Few cars are as recognizable as the Wrangler is. And it's not just some Spartan workhorse in here either. It's got adaptive crews and heated seats and heated steering wheel and navigation on an infotainment system that just works. And frankly, more than anything else, we're here. It's absolutely unparalleled on the rough stuff. Few cars can go where a Wrangler can. Honestly, if you've got a bit of cash and you want a 4x4 with a bit of style, this is what you want. Actually, it's not because this is that's right after a 25 year wait the ford bronco name is back and as impressive as jake's wrangler is this thing makes it feel just a little bit old-fashioned actually the bronco might still have a ladder frame chassis like most good off-roaders including the wrangler but it's got double wishbone front suspension so while it's still mighty off-road as we're about to see the on-road behavior is comparatively much improved and that's pretty important because let's face it that's where they're going to spend about 90 percent of their time but then for that 10 percent it's good to make sure that it can do it in a disused quarry. Currently, the only way to get your hands on a Ford Bronco in the UK is via an importer such as Clive Sutton, who have kindly lent us this antimatter blue example for today's test. They always have a huge selection of American imports in stock, so if you ever like the look of a car from across the pond that we don't get here in the UK, then check them out at the website link in the description box below. I picked this car up from the Clive Sutton dealer the other day in London and the amount of looks and nods and thumbs up that I got was akin to a bright orange supercar. I think Ford has done a brilliant job at bringing the Bronco into the 21st century. Much like Jake's Wrangler, the Bronco is just such a lovable, cool looking thing to drive around in and when you do drive it around, it's so much fun. It just exudes happiness. Even if you never took this thing off road, you still have a big smile on your face after almost every journey. It's that enjoyable. So, two off road icons, one disused quarry, and one decision to be made. Who makes the best all American off roader? Hello, my Geordie friend. We appear to be on a very quiet quarry with many different off road obstacles and two off-road cars, so obvious thing to do would be to test them out and see which one is best. Hmm, I'm liking you thinking. This place looks awesome, doesn't it? Let's get started, shall we? I think we should. Um, I do want to point out one thing though, or a couple of things. Here we go. Is that because this car belongs to Clive Sutton and they are going to sell it eventually, and I don't want to break it really, it's not the same as having a press car where they're there for us to take them to their limits. Not that we always do that, but they're there for them to be reviewed. This is there to be sold. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with it than perhaps you might be with your Jeep. And also, I haven't got as aggressive off-road tyres as you do. So just putting that out there. It's not an excuse, but I'm just putting that out there. Hmm, I mean, it sounds like an excuse to me. It's almost like turning up to an off-road shoot in trainers like you did. Unlike me, you turned up in Timberland boots because that's what you do when something's going to get muddy. Shall we just uh, get going? Shall I lead the charge? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with my trainers, actually. They are very durable, but yeah, you can, uh, you can go first. All right, then let's do this, shall we? Now let's talk specs and details about the Wrangler. Now, the Rubicon is basically the most off-roady version of the car. No matter what Wrangler you get, it's going to be pretty good. But the Wrangler gives you some extra bits and bobs. So you get 
fat knobbly tyres instead of more conventional road based ones. Uh, you get locking uh, differentials for the front and rear axle and it also comes with something called a heavy duty electrical pack and basically there's four sort of auxiliary power switches down by the bottom of the dashboard there and it's for people to basically attach things like spotlights or a winch. Hopefully we don't need a winch today. Um, but it basically means that you can sort of really customise this thing and that's kind of what Jeep's done so well over the years is they've got such an attention to detail when it comes to the Wrangler. I mean, literally the details. I mean, there's little sort of Willys Jeep uh, motifs everywhere and the gear knob and on the windscreen, for example, and on the wheels themselves. Yeah, it's just the, sort of just the little things about this car's grab handles and so on. When it comes to the off-road stuff, it basically means that you have a bit of an advantage. Now, at least for the UK anyway, you only get one engine choice. It's a two litre turbo petrol, uh, makes 268 horsepower and it's okay, I think. Uh, it's basically the same engine that Alfa Romeo use in the Giulia and the Stelvio, particularly for the Veloce versions. Um, the Alfa sort of tweaked it to get a little bit more power out of it. Um, and it's fine, it's actually surprisingly quick to be honest. It does about sort of seven and a half ish seconds to 62. Um, and when you floor it, you're like, oh, actually, this is quite fast. It's got an ace plated gearbox, um, which works perfectly fine. Uh, it's reasonable, does the job, pretty smooth. Now, while the Wrangler might be very, very good off road, Jeep's clearly focused on that more than anything else, and it kind of shows, especially with the Rubicon with those fat, lovely tyres. It's a bit bouncy, quite loud, and not really that refined on the road, I suppose, and that's kind of the trade-off that you get, really, is this, every journey, especially every long journey on the motorway, is quite noisy. There's a lot of wind noise. I mean, this thing is basically as aerodynamic as a brick, so you kind of expect that, really. But the trade-off is, obviously, it's much better on this kind of stuff. But you don't have to go the whole hog, really. There are other versions of the Wrangler you can get, um, which are a lot more sort of road-based. You do also get a four-door option as well. This is the two-door short wheelbase one. Now, Jeep's sort of told me the two-door is better for, for off-roading. There's a much sort of shorter breakover angle, and the turning circle is actually fantastic, really. It's so, so tight for what is quite a big car anyway. With the four door, obviously, as well as getting you two extra doors, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to get in the back, the boot is also quite a chunk larger. That's kind of the problem with this car, is basically the boot space is like that. It's tiny. Um, so it's only really good for short trips, really. But there's just something about the Wrangler, and especially the Rubicon. You know, it's, it's so, it's got such a prime directive. It's built to do one thing and do one thing really well, and it's go off-road. I mean, I mean, this course can get really tough and it's really quite bouncy to be honest, but it's like I'm off to the shops. It's so easy. It's just so effortless. So yes, the Wrangler is a very good off-roader as Jake has just explained, but the Bronco also has excellent pedigree. So what's his 2022 version like in the car magazine quarry? The engine in here is slightly bigger than the Wranglers. It's a 2.3 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol EcoBoost model with 300 horsepower. And while you can get a 2.7 litre V6 and a three litre Raptor version, I think this is actually pretty well suited to the job. There's a choice between a seven speed manual or a 10 speed automatic like I've got here. And again, that's a lot of ratios, but it does the job very well indeed. I've got no real complaints. Granted, many would crave a V8, but this is no slouch. There is more than enough oomph for driving around a quarry pretty slowly, or driving on the road actually quite quickly. It accelerates very nicely up to motorway speeds, no issues there. And the Raptor version, well, gee, I mean, that's gonna be rapid. The cabin, meanwhile, is, as you'd expect, pretty functional. So you do have some mod cons, such as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And I also like these chunky waterproof style buttons on the wheel, and also for the climate control as well. They're nice and chunky so that you can use them while you've got gloves on. None of this touchscreen stuff where you'd really struggle even when you don't have gloves on. The build quality, well, it feels like it's easy to clean and it wouldn't matter too much if you clonked a panel when you've got in in a hurry because you know you're off-roading and you're in a hurry but 
yeah, in terms of like material feel and quality, it doesn't really inspire that much confidence. But when you consider that this car is less than £30,000, or at least it starts from less than $30,000, I should say, in the United States, you can understand it. However, this Outer Banks version, which I don't believe is particularly high spec, especially because it hasn't got the larger infotainment screen, when you import this to the UK, well, from Clive Sutton, it's £75,000. And of course, there's things to add on to that, which they've already done and is included in the price, such as the homologation for driving it in the UK and the import and everything like that. But yeah, £75,000, if you compare it to a Defender, say, the cabin is nowhere near that level of quality. However, as I said before, you are paying for what is just a giant bundle of good old fashioned fun. You can take the doors off, you can take the roof off. And actually in the case of the latter, it probably doesn't make that much difference to refinement because this thing flaps around a lot on the motorway. You really do notice it actually. And I think Jake's Wrangler is probably a bit quieter when you're cruising. But yeah, you can take the doors off, you can take the roof off, and it feels like you're in just a glorified beach buggy. And of course, that's before you even talk about off-roading because that's when things start to get really good fun. All you need to do to transform it from road bronco into off-road bronco is go to the drive mode selector down here, the goat mode selector, and go from any of the road modes, so sport, normal, and eco, which to be honest with you could just be one mode all in one, but anyway, and then put it into either slippery, mud and ruts, or sand. And that automatically engages the four wheel drive. And you've got four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low. And then you've also got the hill descent control, which you use with the cruise control switch here. So you can set it to one mile an hour, two mile an hour, three mile an hour, and it just goes smoothly down the hill without you having to touch any of the pedals. And as you can imagine, when you stop messing around on some of the flatter parts of this quarry and you go to find a few more challenging sections, this is a properly capable off-roader. It doesn't feel like something which has been made for on-road driving first and then off-road added on, which is what you get from a few European SUVs. This is a serious off-roader in its own right. Right, we've got a nice steep hill to go down here. You've got plenty of ground clearance, no issues at all there. It's narrow enough so that you don't feel like when you're going through these ruts that you're gonna scratch anything or get it caught or wedged. And because those those handles which are there for securing loads which come over the roof, they can also help you see where the extremities of the car are, which is very handy indeed. And something else, when you finish with your low range modes and you wanna put it back into high, so four high or two wheel drive, you just simply switch the toggle and it's back into that setting. I know that on Jake's Wrangler, he's struggling a little bit because it's all mechanical and that means that the cogs are so bound together that when he tries to take it out, they're too tight and he has to kind of rock it forwards and back, which can be a little bit of a pain. In this, you don't need to do any of that. You just simply switch it and it goes into two wheel drive or four wheel drive high, easy. Oh, and actually, I nearly forgot. There's something on this car, which I wanted to try out called trail turn assist. And what it is, is it's a function that's supposed to help you turn tighter on off-road courses. So I need to put it in four-wheel drive mode and then press the button up here, trail turn assist on. You put it to full lock and then put your foot down and it does little donuts. And the turning circle is really, wow, that is tight. That's incredible. What a brilliant idea. Who would have thought donuts have a use when you're off-roading? I mean, seriously, who thought of this? They're a genius. After we both did a few more donuts, Jake and I headed back to the starting point to try and come to some conclusion on which of these all-American off-roaders get our seal of approval. So Jake, we've had a hard day at work playing in this <laughs> disused quarry. And as you can probably tell, this isn't the most serious twin test we've ever done, but I still think we should come 
to some kind of verdict. And if I may, I'll start. And I think the Bronco is a brilliant all-rounder. And if it had the tires from your Wrangler, and perhaps if it was also the shorter wheelbase version, it would be almost as good off-road. But then I don't think there's anything you can do to the Wrangler to make it as good on road in terms of like handling and usability as the Bronco. So as an all-rounder, I reckon this thing is where it's at. Would you say that's fair? Yeah, I agree. I think the Jeep's really excelled itself here today, as, it's, as it should really, because frankly, it's got these fantastic tires on, it's got the short wheelbase, it's got a lot of um, off-road equipment that is just necessary to be here. Um, you do sort of struggle a little bit more on the road than you might with the Bronco. It's quite noisy and bumpy and bouncy, but yeah, uh, yeah so as an all-rounder, I, I, I do agree. I think the Bronco is a better all-rounder because it's better at being a car than the Jeep is. But this is by far the best off-roader here. Um, and again, it's a lot to do with those tyres. I mean, speaking of tyres, James, you um, seem to have had a bit of trouble with your trainers. <laughs> yeah, we did a little recce earlier on. I found quite a big swampy area in, in which, uh, yeah, my shoes and my trousers got ruined. But anyway, we're professionals, we carried on. And um, moving back to the cars, if Sorry, we may, yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, I think all-rounder, yes. But I don't know, I feel like a bit, I feel like a bit silly talking about all-rounders with these cars because they're both so niche that you're not buying them for all-rounders because if you want an all-rounder, you know, I think there are other cars that would perhaps do the job better and have a better on-road, off-road balance. You're buying these because of how fun they are. And I've got to say that I love the look of the Bronco. I think they've done a brilliant job with the styling, but even with the Jeep as well, it looks phenomenal. They've done a great job just making it look fun and it stands out and yeah, I mean, look at it. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's kind of the thing. I mean, especially in this Nacho orange paintwork, which I think is just a fantastic name for a fantastic color. But um, like I was saying before, it's, it's just so easily recognizable and everyone knows what it is and everyone smiles when they see it. And it's just one of those inherently fun cars and and yeah like like i say you know if you are watching this video to find out which is the best 4x4 off-road car it is absolutely the jeep it absolutely is yeah. but i imagine you might be feeling a little bit more comfortable on the way home than me <laughs> yeah i'll be feeling more comfortable on the way home so yeah better off-roader better all-rounder or as i said this isn't too far i don't think no. from that as an off-roader but yeah just buy whichever one you know takes your fancy because there's no really big reason why you should have this over that just you look at it you think yes that's for me that's what these cars are about absolutely. So if you can afford it get either one of them you're going to absolutely love it it'll be enormous fun and i think that's the best thing we can say really because it doesn't yeah it doesn't matter which one wins on paper because you don't buy cars like this on paper no but yeah there you go it's it's some kind of verdict <laughs> um yeah it is some kind of some verdict. kind of some yeah. kind uh, we'll be back soon with another more serious group test, which we'll probably be back on the road for. No more ruining my outfit. Um, <laughs> yeah, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notifications on, and we'll see you on the next video.